Hey, what is going on guys? It is Young here and today I'm back in our Fortnite video and in today's video I'm gonna show you guys step by step exactly what I do when I go into gunfights and fully explain how I approach every single fight. I'm going to be really talking through this gameplay and showing you guys step by step on how I was able to get 16 kills and just completely dominate every single fight. And before we get into the video, up on the screen I have the V-Bug giveaway winner of this week. I appreciate everyone who's entered the giveaway and if you guys want a chance to win some more V-Bucks, I do give away V-Bucks every single week. So if you guys want a chance to win some free V-Bucks, all you guys need to do, drop a like on this video, make sure you guys subscribe to my channel and as well subscribe to my second channel. I post a ton of really good content on there so make sure you guys do subscribe. Turn on my post notifications and as well leave a comment down below of your Xbox gamer tag, your PSN gamer tag or epic account. And if you guys would like to support me as a creator in the item shop, all you have to do is go over to the item shop, go into the bottom right hand corner, support a creator, and type in my code. My code is Young Humor. Type it in, and you guys will have me support it as a creator. And all right, guys, let's get right to the video. All right, so in this video, I'm going to be breaking down step by step and exactly how I go when I approach gunfights. And really just show you guys exactly what I'm doing in every single fight because of course every single fight you go into in Fortnite is going to be a little bit different. Everyone does have a little bit different of a play style. Some people are going to play a little bit more aggressive. Some people are going to be some box warriors and you shoot at them once they camp in a box. Pretty much a lot of players you play in arena but it does happen quite a bit in public matches. Then you have people kind of like a medium aggression where they sometimes push and then they sit back a lot. So there is definitely a lot of people to play against and a lot of different play styles that you have to counter. So when it comes to winning every single gunfight, there isn't like a one size fits all. There's going to be a lot of different things that you have to do. So it's always best to improve every aspect of your game when it comes to accuracy, building, game IQ, just everything like that. There's definitely a lot of things that you want to do. So starting off, I did land at uh, Paradise Palms. I ended up having four kills at the beginning. And we end up pushing over to the motel to fight the team up here because I did get a knock on one of the players up here. And yes, I could have pushed the team that was down below with the other buildings. But the reason why I didn't, it wasn't smart at all. Because even if I was able to push the team and maybe win the gunfight, I would have had to fight these players up top, spraying at me the entire time. And I would have had barely any mats. So really what would have happened is I would have killed the players down low. And then I would have got absolutely sprayed from the guys up top. It would have been a super long and drug out gunfight. So instead, I went for the guys on top and I could have easily went for the guys in the middle. But I decided to grab the loot and then go ahead and just rotate over to Salty to reboot my teammate. Which I could have easily fought them but I decided it was just best that I didn't because I didn't have any extra shield. And my mat count was only like two or 300. So I could have easily fought them if I, would, if I really wanted to. And going back, I probably would have because I could have gotten 18 kills in this game. But it wouldn't have made a huge difference. It was just really important that I rotated rotated over to the hotel first when I challenged the gunfight because otherwise I would have got sprayed from the team up top so that was just one thing that I was thinking about when going into that gunfight and really I think these were the two players that were coming in from Paradise Palms there was also another team coming in I don't even probably from retail or some area like that there was a good two or three teams in this area and since the zone is right over here we basically just waited for a really long time for them to come out super cheesy super annoying for everyone we we're going against but we were just really waiting for them they were in the zone for a really long time so we were just sitting back waiting for them to make a play I ended up getting off two or three kills right here we were just sitting back waiting for people to make a move come out of the gunfight and we knew they were gonna be super weak because they were fighting in the storm for a really long time so the second they were done with the gunfight they really rushed to come out I got a really easy just one or two tags on them and I was able to kill them pretty fast so going into the next gunfight, I immediately went for height. I could have easily landed down low with the guy with the campfire and got a few tags on him, but I decided to land up height first because I was going into a 2v1. I always want to try to keep high ground as much as possible. So I got high ground. I went for a quick edit play on the guy below me. I could have, I should have placed a floor and a cone, but I caught the guy pretty off guard with just the floor, so it really wasn't needed. I was able to challenge that gunfight and win and then finish off on his teammate. So we're going to notice that the players across are going to be super annoying uh, holding with snipers. And there's a few different ways to approach the gunfight. And even if I did have a sniper rifle, it's probably one of the last things that I want to challenge with. Just because I have no extra HP. And if I hit with the sniper, I would get knocked and they would push me really hard with their launch pad probably. So it just really wasn't in my best interest to try to go for any tags. So I'm just building over and when I was building over, they destroyed the launch pad so I had to get this baller. Which really worked out perfectly because as soon as I got the baller and headed over there, they were actually in a gunfight with another team. So that allowed me to just really go for high ground pretty easily. They were completely distracted. I didn't have anything to worry about. 
And one thing that I did here that a lot of people don't uh, take into consideration is as soon as I was fighting, pretty much I was build fighting the guy who was right below me. As you can see, he was coming up. And as he was coming up, I decided to look over and get some shots on his teammate. A lot of people don't do that. The second they're in a uh, build fight with one player, they get really tunnel visioned and they don't focus on anyone else in the area. So that's one thing to really consider is when you're building up in a gunfight, maybe you're build fighting one player, is to always look for other shots on his teammate or maybe another team that might be coming up. Those are some really uh, simple and easy shots to get because they're going to be distracted on whoever they're fighting. And it's just going to allow you to get a bunch of easy tags on them. And sometimes you can even knock them by doing a good amount of damage because even if they're in a fight, a lot of the times they're going to be coming off of that fight pretty weak on HP. So you might even be able to get a few knocks, a few tags that way. But at the same time, when you're getting shots, you do have to be very careful if the other player is not building up on you because the audio in this game is pretty whack. So the guy can just be building up next to you and you really wouldn't have much of an idea. So I was really careful about that. And as you can see, I got a few shots and then I built up and then I was able to finish off that fight pretty quickly. So as you can see, pretty much every single fight that I was going into in this game was a third party. So I did luck out in that aspect, but pretty much I would have done the exact same thing in every single situation i would win for height like i'm doing here and as i'm height above the player that's below me i'm getting shots on the player who's next to his to my teammate he had absolutely no idea and allowed for a very easy knock and a very easy kill because he was just completely focused on fighting my teammate dodging him and i just looked over and got a ton of easy shots completely melted him with my ar and got a very easy kill on him so that was just really another example of why you always want to try to be looking at the other players even if you're build fighting the guy who's directly below you because you can get a lot of very simple and easy kills just by shooting at other players when maybe there's a guy below you maybe there's a guy that you're currently fighting there's a lot of open shots on players who are nearby that you really should be taking into consideration every single time that you're going into a gunfight and I also always recommend if you're in the late game and you have a ton of steel or a ton of brick to always use that material because it is a lot stronger and a lot harder for the other players to break. So if you're using brick or steel in the end game, it can really give you a major advantage in build fights. Because if you're going in 2v1, a lot of times they're just going to be trying to shoot you out the entire time. But if you're using brick and steel, it's a much more difficult and they still can break you down, but it's going to take a little bit more time, which is, that, which is enough time for you to get a decent amount of tags on them and maybe they won't challenge you as hard. So using brick and steel is just going to give you a major advantage. It's something you, could, you should always consider using if you have a ton of materials. And usually in the late game, you're going to kill one team that end up going like Junk Junction, farmed up max steel. You end up killing them, and then you get a ton of steel from them. It happens pretty much every single time. There's going to be that one team at the end of the game with zero kills. You end up killing them. And then you're just absolutely stacked on minis, shields, big shields, and materials. You're really just stacked on everything. So here you can see is I'm, as I'm building up, I'm also building a little bit in front of me because I want to try to get shots on the guy who's coming by, uh, from behind me in the zone because he has to push out because of the zone. So pretty much that's going to allow me to, got, to get some tags on them because he has to move no matter what. And as he's moving over, I get some tags on him. So I'm pushing this player pretty aggressive and the reason being because I know the other team behind me can push over at any second. So I want to try to get the quickest kill possible on the guy that i'm fighting so i don't get tagged from the guys across the map and just have to deal with them the entire time so i got a very quick kill on the player that i was currently fighting so now that allows it for a 1v2 which is going to give me a pretty good advantage because i do have zone and even if i didn't i have a launch pad and i would have launch pad to zone to get high ground so these players are just camping on the other side i really was just trying to get my materials up make sure i had enough minis everything like that and then try to make a play from there so at this point, I'm just waiting for the other team to make a play because I do have zone. So I see them trying to use a quad crash. I'm not really sure what the play was right there. So I saw him land on the little ledge on the mount in front of me. And when I was looking at my minimap, I noticed they weren't in zone, so I didn't have to make a play. But I think if they rotated to the right a little bit more, they still would have been in zone. So if they would have rotated over to the ledge to my right... To the right side of the mountain i would 100 percent use my launch pad and then made a play from there but since they didn't they were just sitting on that ledge i decided to just sit back and wait for them to just make a play see what they're trying to do there's no point in really challenging trying to do anything and i guess i could go for a sniper shot if i wanted to so i decided to go over and they actually came to me so i went right back and from here i did have high ground and i noticed that him and his teammate were going a little bit lower so i, I decided i can just jump down a little bit but even though I'm jumping down, I'm making sure that I still keep high ground. I don't want to try to give all of it up, especially because I don't know how much HP they have. So I don't want to go fully uh, engaged in a fight. If they have 200 HP, I hit them for like 40 and then I end up giving up my high ground, which is really going to cost me a lot of mats and more HP trying to go for shots. So as I have high ground, I'm going for the jump, shoot, and build. 
And on the last player, I can have it pretty easily. I do have his teammate knocked, and this player just going for high ground, so I know I can just get this guy pretty easily. So I'm waiting to try to see what he's going to do, and I notice this guy slips down. I'm going to jump down and quick scope him right in the back for a really nice kill. And with that being said, that's wrap up for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys liked it, and if you guys could, make sure you guys drop a like on this video. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Turn on my notifications so you're notified for every single new video. And alright guys, I'll see you next video.